All right. Last but not least, last part of this tutorial is about multi-shell data. So this is more and more popular with the arrival of the Human Connectome project. Uh, we have more and more acquisitions that are multi-B value. And so I'm going to show you a little demo and a bit of slides on this. So uh, not that many slides. There's lots of good papers that you can read on this, but I'll just point you to a few demos and tutorials on DiPy and get a gist of it. So I'll go over multi-shell spherical deconvolution. We just saw single shell spherical deconvolution. And then I'm going to get back and close the loop with my introduction about the diffusion propagate. Because if we have multi-shell, we can have the full P of R, the full diffusion propagate. So going beyond single shell, so now we're having, uh, we can do static repulsion algorithms to generate multiple shells. So you can see here, we have to be careful because it's recommended and now and it's known that it's better to have multiple shells that do choose directions that are globally uniform on the sphere. So on the left here, you have a badly sampled multiple shell uh, acquisition. Sorry here and on the on the right you have the the multi-shell version that's well uh, aligned and uniform on the screen. so now with multi-shell spherical deconvolution there's an extra layer of complexity now suddenly we're going to handle all tissues in the brain that is gray matter right so we're going to have to define a spherical a small spherical diffusion tensor in the cortex, because these we know these are locations far from isotropic, but for diffusion it looks isotropic because we have so many crossings that it looks like a small circular diffusion tensor. We're still going to have our elongated diffusion tensor as a good model of single fibers in the white matter, and we're going to have a third compartment, which is CSF, which here is a big sphere. Right? So we have a small sphere for uh, the gray matter, our standard diffusion tensor for single fiber populations in the white matter, and a big sphere for CSF. And the multi-shell, multi-tissue spherical deconvolution will take all these different response functions to reconstruct a white matter fiber ODF, a CSF fiber ODF, and a gray matter fiber ODF. And I'll show you that in the demo in, in, a, in a short while. Um, well, just now, actually. So let's switch to the demo. Sorry. Um, let's just switch to the demo. So now I'm going back to my uh, Jupiter. I'm getting into the part two of the demo. Um, I can re-import the basic module, the visualization. This is the same as the previous example. Now I'm going to generate a multi-shell sample, but in fact, it's from a gradient table that I'm giving you. So it's part of the demo here, this grad multi-shell 100 direction dot text. This is actually a gradient table that we do use in my lab uh, routinely. It's 100 directions spread over 3B values. 300, 1,000, 2,000. It's appropriate for multi-compartment modeling, for isotropic diffusion, Nadi type models. It's appropriate for kurtosis. It's appropriate for spherical deconvolution. So it's kind of our now an, a good, let's say, state-of-the-art uh, uh, protocol for clinical applications or you know a 10 or 11 minute acquisition if you have multi-band acceleration. Um, so you can see that now suddenly I have a few B0 images, then B300, B1000, B2000. In practice, these B0s would be spread into the protocol at every approximately every 10 or 15 directions. And so you can see in total we have seven B0 images, 300, B300, uh, eight B300, 32 B1000. So this is a sense our DTI shell and then 60B2000 shell. So this is a bit like a hard shell. And so a little bit like in my slide, you can generate this sampling scheme on the sphere. So you can see in 
red the B300, in blue the B1000, in light blue the B2000. So this is for multiple shells, or we can project it on a single shell, and you can see that more or less orientations are well spread. We still generate our signal as before, but now uh, I'm going to generate a small grid uh, where you can see I'm, I'm going to generate my response functions for the white matter. So uh, at 300 in the white matter, this is almost like a sphere. So 700, 777, 1533, 1533 for the different B values. So now you have a, a response function per B value. This is why I have three rows here. In the gray matter, like I said before, it's a small sphere, so like 444. And the CSF, it's a big sphere, so 30, 30, 30. I generate a multi-shell fiber response function. I get my multi-shell deconvolution model, for which I give it a gradient table, my response functions, and spherical harmonic order of eight. Then I'm going to show you different visualization, but essentially I'm going to produce an RGB map that says if it's a if it's blue, it's in the white matter. If it's sort of green, it's in the gray matter, and if it's in the red, it's CSF. So if we run this thing, you can see that. Uh, and if you look at the code, I generated myself a crossing fiber in the white matter then a single fiber white matter that starts to be partial volume with CSF, 100% CSF and 100%, uh, sorry, 100% uh, gray matter and then 100% CSF. And this one is actually a bit of partial volume between gray matter and white matter. And so it's amazing that the multi-shell multi-tissue model handles these different volume fraction of different tissues. And here what I'm showing you is just a white matter fiber ODFs because the model outputs the gray matter ODFs and the spherical harmonics ODFs as well. So if I visualize the gray matter ODFs, you can see suddenly I have no white matter component in these 100% white matter voxels. I have a very small sphere in a bit of the partial volume. So this only a small percentage of the voxel was gray matter and it was able to extract it, my gray matter small ball, and finally my CSF, which is just, just a large isotropic compartment. So I realize this is, I'm going quickly. It's very complicated. We went from just the, the signal now to multi-shell, multi-tissue deconvolution, uh, but I, hopefully that sparks a little, um, you know, idea in your head that you can read this and you can actually implement it and play with it in DiPy. So back to my slides, we just saw the multi-shell, multi-compartment spherical deconvolution. And last but not least, we're back to square one with the diffusion propagator. So now I want to reconstruct this, this P of R, which is the diffusion propagator. Um, the maths are quite complicated. Uh, I really encourage you guys to have a look at it, read the papers, but essentially a bit like spherical harmonics. There are basis functions to capture three-dimensional signals. So the, the same idea will apply now. We're just going to express our signal into a 3D basis, not just spherical harmonics. We will have the spherical harmonics part, but we'll also have a radial part that has these Hermite polynomials or this single oscillator functions. Uh, simple oscillator functions that are helping us capture the behavior of the radial decay of the diffusion signal. So this is just a mathematical signal representation. Uh, that's a basis, so that's very has very nice properties, but that can express the diffusion signal. So lots of literature on this topic um, that started quite early, but nowadays is converging in actually tools that we can use in uh, DiPy. 
And so essentially, um, just like I, I told you, we can express this signal. So E of Q is actually S over S zero here as a three dimensional basis that depends on the angular part, which is the spherical harmonics. So this is the SH part, the spherical harmonics and a radial part, which is modeled by these 1D functions of Hermite polynomials. And if you trust me that this works, well, you can put this into the equation and actually solve the integral analytically, and you get solutions. You get a very elegant solution for the coefficient C here, but also for the features of P of R. We, we can reconstruct P of R itself, and then several moments, non-Gaussianity, return to origin, return to plane probability, mean square displacement, and a lot of formulas that you see actually in the papers in Einstein's formulas. But really now we can do this non-invasively with models at every location of the brain. Um, and so as an example, we can extract this R top feature, which is sensitive to restricted diffusion. So you can appreciate R top almost like looks like a T1 weighted image. So the, which which highlights the, the restricted component of the water trapped inside axons. Uh, so we have R top mean squared displacement, which is the generaliz uh, generalization of mean diffusivity and several other metrics um, that we can extract. So the mean squared displacement is the the generalization of mean diffusivity in the world of uh, diffusion propagator and so i'll finish with a quick demo on the existing models in dipi so you can actually do a 3d shore or map mri uh, several several demos on this in the dipi tutorials um and so oh. <laughs> So last but not least, the diffusion propagated part of the demo. And you can see now I'm choosing the shore model. There's also a map MRI model. Again, fixing some parameters that are based on the papers. You can read the papers and introduce these regularization and zeta and order parameters. Same, same principle as before. You declare your model, you fit it, and then you extract its features like the coefficient, the ODF, or the different metrics. And so in this case, this is the diffusion ODF, which really looks, if you go back to the beginning, like the ground truth multi-tensor ODF. But we can extract also several other things, like different ODFs at different radius. Right? We have the full P of R here. So this is P of R for different R's. And as you can see, when you're close to the origin, you look like isotropic diffusion. But as, as soon as you go far away in radial, in radius, you get sharper and sharper, meaning the probability of being inside the fiber population is increasing to be very sharp. And this is, a, in a sense, looks a lot like a fiber ODF. It's not. It's still the propagator evaluated at a specific radius. So you really have the true full 3D object in the voxel. Uh, and so you have different tutorials on the DiPi. And here I'm just switching model. Instead of the 3D shore, I'm using the map MRI model. So this is inspired by a lot of work from Evran Ozerslan, an implementation by Rutger Fick. Uh, and so you can use this model and get the diffusion ODF and different propagator at different radii. So this concludes my tutorial. So it was a pleasure to walk you through uh, quickly in the last hour uh, through basically everything you can do from spherical functions to spherical harmonics, to cue ball imaging, to spherical deconvolution, to multi-shell um, relatively easily in DiPi in the world of model free techniques, if you accept for spherical deconvolution, which assumes a response function, but uh, uh, very close to my heart and my work and my previous papers. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have during this week. 
or via email uh, or anything in the future. So thanks for having me and have a great DiPi workshop.